So I'll give you a, a bit of a bit of an introduction to Tony. So Tony uh, is a published author. Um, so came out with a book a number of years ago, um, very well recognised. Is currently ranked as the number one influencer for professional selling in the Asia Pacific region by Top Sales Magazine. Uh, so he was he was actually the only um, person in APAC to be recognised there. Uh, Tony understands modern strategic selling in the real world and has a successful track record in, uh, as both a sales director and managing director role for public companies um, uh, in the APAC uh, and North American uh, regions. Um, Tony is a regular speaker at, uh, at conferences and writes about sales leadership and technologies for and magazines, um, his own included. Um, his LinkedIn blog is widely read. Um, I believe the, the last count was around 10,000 uh, followers. And his best selling book uh, is now in its sixth printing. Uh, he's taught for the University of Sydney and is currently on the faculty of the University of Technology uh, of Sydney uh, delivering courses on how to modernise selling. So in Tony Hughes you've got someone that's a real authority on B2B selling uh, and, and in particular uh, within the uh, APAC market. Uh, with three decades of sales management and leadership expertise, Tony started his corporate career in selling and, and holds numerous sales records for companies that have never been broken. Tony has frameworks for winning large complex opportunities and uh, is also known for using social platforms to modernise the way people sell. His met methodologies recently helped one of his clients win a contract in excess of $100 million. Um, I actually approached Tony um, uh, uh, about uh, embedding his methodology into CRM uh, a few years ago uh, and, and this was back uh, uh, when we were only doing uh, sugar. We do obviously sugar and sales force these days um, and we started off with the previous version of sugar which was sugar six. Um, now when sugar seven came around uh, it presented um, a, a very, very strong platform to really create the sort of user experience that enabled um, sales reps to, to really uh, or empowered sales reps uh, with their methodology within the CRM. Uh, we recently did a webinar around uh, the actual RSVP selling software and how it works within the Sugar platform, but today we wanted to have a bit of a conversation with Tony around his methodology and why it's important to bring it inside of CRM to empower your sales reps. Um, so I thought I'd uh, start uh, with, a, with a question for Tony. Um, so, so why is methodology important in B2B selling and, and, and what's, what's broken with, uh, with how we sell to B2B um, at the moment, in your opinion? Hey, hey Glenn, thanks for having me on the webinar today. Uh, really good to join you and hi to everybody on the call. Um, yeah, look, you've actually opened with a really good question because uh, and unless there's a problem, why are we introducing something new? And I guess the best way to answer that question is really at two levels. Um, it isn't just sales methodologies or the way that people are selling that's broken. I think there's also some fundamental problems in the way that people are using CRM. So I'm going to talk about both of those things. Um, but what I thought I'd talk about initially is just to really frame the sort of gravity of the problem. Now, all of these statistics that I'm going to show in the next couple of minutes relate very much to business to business selling as opposed to business to consumer. Um, I'm going to show you some stats in a little while that are fairly terrifying as far as how many business to business sales jobs are going to be lost around the world in, in the next five years. But it, it surprises people to know normally that uh, up to 40% uh, business to business sales people um, actually hit their or actually fail to hit their targets in professional selling. Now that was research done by the corporate executive board who surveyed over 5,000 sales organizations. Interestingly the TAS group which really worked just with business to business sellers found that two-thirds uh, of sellers actually missing their quota and when you look at the cost of running a field sales force of employing uh, a B2B salesperson out there with a car and a mobile phone racking up um, travel and entertainment expenses, uh, it certainly costs a lot of money. And one of the, reason, the, the reasons that I believe so many fail is their approach to selling is really wrong. Um, this slide here is really interesting research. Uh, this is actually out of the book, The Challenger Sale, that came out in 2012. 
Uh, but what they did is they went and surveyed over 5,000 buying organizations and they, they asked the buyers, what causes you to select one supplier over another when you're doing a competitive evaluation? So the interesting thing here is that this is not really the opinion of salespeople or sales managers. This is what the sellers, sorry, the buyers themselves say. And interestingly, if you talk to a salesperson and say, why did I uh, or why did we lose the business? They'll typically say that the business was lost due to price. And if you ask them, well, why did we win a piece of business? They'll say, well, it was me and my great relationships. This um, research actually flies in, in the face of that. So what buyers say is that about 20% of the reason I'll buy from somebody is the company's uh, brand reputation. Uh, the other 19 or 20 percent is around the product capabilities or the ability of the organization to deliver. So all of those, I guess, are the intrinsic value in what's being sold. It's the, the fundamental value of the thing that the client's purchasing. But interestingly, only 9 percent of the reason that people uh, you know, will actually select somebody is price. And yet we often tend to think that price is really important, especially in a world where many industries are either being disrupted on one hand or their high value solutions are being commoditized on the other. But the staggering thing when I saw this research is that more than half of the reason that people buy is, is actually the experience that, that they had when they dealt with the person. And when the corporate executive board researchers asked people, what do you really mean by you know the sales experience you received? It was really those three things there that you can see on the slide. So it was the salesperson's ability um, to offer a unique and valuable perspective, help them navigate alternatives and especially risk, and really really educate them to some degree. And what's happening at the moment, um, Gartner just released a study very recently that says that by the end of this year, so by the beginning of 2016, that's only about eight weeks away, seven or eight weeks away, nearly 90% of chief marketing officers are focusing and investing on customer experience as the way that they differentiate. And I, I think all of us would agree with that. Um, I know for myself, I switched away from uh, Windows over to Apple uh, three years ago and I went out on my own in business. And when I go into an Apple store to buy something, at one level, I just really don't care about the price because I get such a superb customer experience when I buy from them. It's not about price for me, it's about customer experience. And the reality is for us who are business to business sellers, is our ability to create seamless end-to-end -end customer experience that really delights customers means that we need to have a single source of the truth and a way of managing those customer-centric processes. And that to me is really what CRM should be about. I'll get onto CRM in a moment. But just to stay on the topic of salespeople, um, this was some more research that was brought out earlier this year by Andy Hall from Forrester. And what he uh, predicts is that within four years from now, there'll be one million salespeople in America will no longer have jobs. Um, and what that equates to is 22% of sales jobs just going away in the next four to five years. If you have a look at that quadrant on the right, that's actually a, a quadrant uh, that was out of, out of my book that I published. And what I've overlaid onto this in the blue writing and those red and green percentages is actually Andy's, Andy's prediction. So if you look in the bottom left-hand quadrant there, if you're just a transactional seller, um, a third of those jobs are going to go away. Uh, just above that in that sort of tactical area, what Andy calls explainers, people who explain the product or service to a client, a quarter of those jobs will go away. And down in the bottom right-hand side where you're really a um, account manager relationship builder where you help clients navigate in essence of often the complexity of your own organization or offerings. 15% of those roles will go and the only sales roles that are going to grow in the next five years are people that are truly uh, truly strategic, the ones that take a consultative approach and become trusted uh, by, by their clients. If you look at that value quadrant, just, just to bring the, the problem of the way we sell um, you know, being a driver for why we need to integrate methodology and technology together. This is another way of having a look at that quadrant. So on that on that left vertical axis is the revenue and margin for the seller and on the, the bottom axis there, the horizontal one, is the complexity or the business value that's offered for the client. So obviously if it's a high margin, high dollar price solution we're offering, and it's highly complex or represents a lot of value to the client, that's that top right-hand corner. 
and that's where all of us in business want to operate. You know, we want to be be off offering solutions that are sticky, that are high value, where clients are really locked into us and loyal. But increasingly, what actually happens is that that bottom left-hand quadrant actually is getting much bigger. Everything drifts toward being a commodity. And if you're a hunter or a farmer style of salesperson, and you go from end up uh, going from that top left quadrant or the bottom right quadrant into the bottom left, there just isn't the margin to be able to actually fund your role, and that's actually the problem that organisations are facing. So the, the reality is, is that sales and marketing has got to come together. The CEO has got to adopt the position of being chief customer experience officer because there's no one person around his or her boardroom table that really has a single view of all of this. But what I believe organisations need to do is to increase the investment that they're making in technology, especially things and platforms like CRM, and take away from their field force um, those cash cow more commodity style of products and services and force their field to value. There'll be fewer field salespeople, but they'll need to move to value. And organizations need to get really good at using technology um, to, to actually help customers transact through a multi-channel world, which is re really where everything is going. So, so Glenn asked the question originally, why do we need a new methodology? Maybe a, a little bit of the history on the main methodologies that are out there. Um, there's certainly more than this, but these are really the main ones. So um, we've all heard of spin selling. So uh, that came out in the late 80s uh, by Neil Rackham, who was kind enough to endorse my own book. Um, but spin selling is really a framework for running conversations, not for really running a complex uh, uh, enterprise opportunity. Jim Holden in the 90s came out with power-based selling, which is now eFox. Um, Keith Eads and others came out with solution selling and value selling. That all morphed into insight selling. Um, and then the latest thing that's come out is this concept of challenger, which again is not really a methodology. It's really a, a way of thinking about how you go and develop business. But in that um, purple box you can see on the left there, those methodologies really get supported by process tools. Um, so you've probably heard of things like a Millerheim and Blue Sheet to try and actually manage complexity. Um, but, the, but the thing for me that I found was uh, I was managing director for a software company uh, in Australia um, back in 2005 and we were using, we actually had a couple of those methodologies there. Um, but what I found was that unless the sales manager is investing a lot of time really pushing people to fill in the tools and use them properly, whether salespeople are just too busy or whether they're too lazy doesn't really matter. The reality is, is they just tend to not use the tool. So what, what I did is I came up with an intuitive, simple way of approaching managing a, a complex sale, um, which is really this methodology here, which is RSVP selling. So what I really thought about was that the four things we need to have covered to win complex business is the first thing is we need relationships with the right people. Most salespeople are busy selling at the wrong level in the organization. So we need relationships with people that have genuine influence uh, and or can give us real insight into the organization and people of integrity that will do what they say that they'll do for us. So we need to build relationships at that right level. And the next thing is if we're selling into bigger organizations, um, the latest statistics are that there's uh, over five people involved in every buying decision inside an organization. And there was some research that was just published last month that actually showed that when there's one person inside your customer that's making the decision, if they go to market for something, there's an 86% probability that they're going to go ahead and buy something. But the moment you add a second person, the probability of them going ahead with a buying decision with anybody drops down to about 54%. So that's a massive drop when you add a second person into the process. And in big enterprises, there's almost six people involved, um, and the probability of them making a decision drops dramatically. And that's why one of the things I believe is that the biggest competitor we have in business is the competitor of do nothing or the status quo, as opposed to our traditional competitors. So what happens is if we can get relationships with the right people and then think about our strategy for managing those relationships and dealing with the competition and the competitor to obsess about, as I just said, is the do nothing competitor, what that does is it drives us to value and, how, and I define value as stop projecting a value proposition but understand how your customer measures, evaluates and defines value and risk. So are we creating compelling business value for them and managing their risk? So we think about in terms of delivering outcomes 
and managing risk for them. And then the last piece in this formula is process alignment. The reason that um, senior executives, I believe, don't trust the forecast in their CRM uh, is because it's so it's so inaccurate. And when they, they scratch beneath the surface on a deal, they find that it's populated with out-of-date or, or inaccurate information. And the forecast dates in the system are usually dates that the salesperson needs to hit as opposed to dates that are really owned by the customer and matter for the customer. So um, the P and RSVP is make sure that we understand the customer's evaluation, selection and procurement process. And I've always taught people to, to build what I call a closed plan. Some people call it a win plan. Um, but to build one of those and then change the name on the top of it and print it out and go and sit down with your client. And the name on the top with the client will be a project alignment plan so that you really say to the client, I want to make sure that we've got our resources available uh, when you're going to need them. Uh, you know, if, if you've told me that this time frame is when you need to be live with what we're offering you, let's start to work backwards to all of these dates make sense. Um, so, so that's really where the methodology came from. And I started to use that, and you can use it on, on the back of the napkin in a coffee shop, on a whiteboard, in, in an account plan. Um, and back in 2005, uh, I was running Hummingbird, which got bought by Open Text Corporation. But we won three of the four biggest contracts in the world. There were 1,600 employees worldwide. We were only 30 employees for the ANZ region, but we won three of the four biggest deals in the world using this methodology. And, and since then, it's won hundreds of millions of dollars of business. The um, other thing I wanted to talk about was was what I regard is is the holy grail of sales enablement. So obviously you need a methodology, so in, a, in essence a, a, a way that you think about how you sell strategically. Um, but the holy grail of sales to me is when you can get methodology and your sales process all enabled within technology so that it all becomes a coaching platform. Uh, I firmly believe that the weak link in the revenue chain for most organisations is actually sales management and not because sales managers aren't capable but because sales managers are, in, are spread incredibly thin. Um, so what needs to happen is sales managers need to spend less time revisiting the forecast every few days and more time actually coaching their people. So in this illustration you can see here the, the, the methodology really drives the strategy. It's why are we doing what we're doing in this particular deal to try and win it? Who are we engaged with? How, how are we executing? That's really what methodology is all about. And then the, and then the process piece is how we drive execution. It, it, it's the what are we doing at what point in the buyer's journey? How are we mapping our selling process to the, to the buyer's process? Um, you know, so how do we go through and do discovery and qualify a deal and do our proposals? Um, you know, how do we, we run a contract negotiation and actually onboard clients? That's really the sales process. And then within a CRM system, and every organization has just got to have a CRM system today, you know, that's obviously where we manage all of those, all of those particular elements. And what's been missing historically is a level of transparency uh, in sales process and deals. And what's been missing is a real level of confidence in the data that's in CRM systems. So I'm just going to show you some statistics that you may find fairly staggering. Um, the, the first thing uh, is the, the percentage of data in CRM systems uh, where the executives just don't have confidence in it. Um, and it, it's 27% is where they do have confidence. So, you know, that's um, 60, sorry, 73% of data where they don't. Um, and that's a staggering figure. I think many organizations know they need to put a CRM system in, uh, but what they do through poor change management and not investing properly and not thinking things through is they end up putting in a very expensive contacts database and a manage up forecasting tool that yields that kind of result. Um, so it's just terrible if you've got an implementation uh, where people don't have confidence. Um, this was additional research actually done by uh, Miller Hyman back in 2012. And this is where they surveyed uh, hundreds of clients. They do an annual survey and they asked them, does your CRM system improve the productivity of your salespeople? And only 23% of respondents said yes. And then the other question was, you know, does a CRM system improve the quality of the interactions with customers? And again, only 24% said that. And when you think that uh, next year, 
chief marketing officers are obsessively focusing on using customer experience as the way that they differentiate rather than just product or price or points of presence. But it's all about how do they deliver customer experience. Um, you can obviously see that this is a serious problem. Um, but th these aren't the only people that have actually done the research. Um, Dunn and Bradstreet <clears throat> working with Butler in, in, in the UK and Europe, so those previous stats were mainly out of America. But in Europe they found that 70% of CRM implementations fail to meet expectations. Um, and, and Gartner found exactly the same thing in the USA and noted that they don't see things improving. Um, the, the last stat I'll give you is, uh, is from Jason Jordan, who's a management consultant out of the States. I know Jason quite well. Um, this book here, Cracking the Sales Management Code, is highly recommended. Um, he makes some important points. Um, one, one of the things that he says is that inside CRM systems, 83% of the things we're putting on dashboards and running in reports and trying to measure are not things that can be managed. Um, you know, he's he's of the view that that you know you can only manage ac activities that feed into delivering your objectives that then create results, and it's a giant mistake for organisations to try and manage by results. And often the the indicators that people are putting in CRM and other system dashboards and reports are lag lag indicators. That they're not the input indicators that actually go and create the success. So enough of the negativity, I just really wanted to say that to say that th there, there is a problem, you've got to have a CRM, but very few organisations manage to get the value out of implementation that they could and use it to transform the way that they sell. So what, what Glenn did uh, a number of years ago is he approached me and said, look, you know, the RSVP selling methodology has got a great track record. Um, Glenn was using it or still uses it within his own organisation that delivers great results. Uh, and I've been talking about this concept of the holy grail. How do you bring methodology and process and the technology all together to transparently, in essence, playbook the way that people sell and enable people to coach and give that level of confidence? Um, and what Glenn's done is just a brilliant job in taking my methodology for this concept of, of progressive qualification. So you don't just qualify the deal once to decide whether you're, whether you're pursuing it. You use that qualification pro process all of the way through the sale at particular gate points to make sure that you're actually covering all of the bases. Um, the other thing that Glenn's done brilliantly is to bring relationship mapping inside um, Sugar CRM with the RSVP selling module and, and there's two lots of relationship maps in there. There's an org chart of the organisation and that builds as you simply nominate the relationships when you put the contacts into Sugar but then it also duplicates into another tab where you can drag it and move it around to create your influence map. In essence, the power base inside the organisation um, for how they can make the decision. And the reason that's important is that because there's at least half a dozen people typically involved in, a, in an enterprise sale, uh, you want to identify all of the people that can say no as well as the people that can just say yes. Um, what Glenn's also done is, is prompt the right questions at the different stages in the deal, which is the concept of playbooking, but in a very practical way. Uh, and then what's also there is this concept of validating the salesperson's information and plan. So you know, as you go through and ask the questions, for example, around relationships, um, you know, one of those qualification questions is, do we have direct access to the person with power of veto above the executive sponsor? Now you can configure these questions for your own sales environment, every organisation is different but that's just an example. And if the salesperson said yes, what Glenn's enabled is the sales manager can say, well look, it's great you're saying yes, who is the person? Um, when, when did you last meet with them? So you can actually test and validate that what the person is saying is the case and then create actions. So you know your normal tasks in Sugar, there's integration there so that you can track all of those actions. And then obviously build up that win-close plan, which is like a Gantt-style project plan. And then the other thing here that's really powerful is the concept of an opportunity plan snapshot or a PDF snapshot. So if a senior executive, an overseas exec, or if the CEO or managing director wanted to go and visit that prospect to help try and progress the opportunity or close it, you can simply press a button and print the opportunity plan. Uh, and they've actually got that as a briefing document and then obviously embedded coaching videos as well which are really, really 
powerful and you can upload your own videos. So the, the, the real point in all of this is that I believe that the way we sell is actually far more important than what we sell. Uh, the best organizations are obsessively focusing in the coming years on creating exceptional customer experience. So through every touch point that a, that a, a prospect or a customer has, when they're looking online uh, from that first point where they find us, that we provide a great experience for them. And you've got to have a single source of the truth about both prospects and customers to be able to actually deliver that for them, which is really the key. And then by integrating a sales methodology and then configuring your own specific processes, you've, you've then achieved you know, what Serum has always promised. Serum has always had the promise of being able to really enable a sales organization to be truly efficient and deliver great customer experience and give the organization confidence and drive out cost in the way that customer-centric processes are run. This is now a way to achieve it because you're providing a sales, the sales team and sales people with a tool that actually helps them sell efficiently rather than them using it you know, as a manage up tool. So you know that was really the main point I wanted to I wanted to make today. I'd really encourage you to connect with me in LinkedIn. I, I write a lot about customer experience and CRM and sales leadership. So if you just find me uh, in LinkedIn, just search Tony Hughes. Um, when you find my profile, you'll see there's um, uh, my blog is there. You'll see three articles. If you just click the See More button, it will actually expand it out. And then obviously, if you follow my blog, you'll you'll get notified when I publish. Um, or if you're reading a particular blog post, if you can just hit the follow button and that'll actually enable you to do that. So what, what I wanted to do now, I guess, was just really throw it open to questions. Um, these are some examples, just while you're putting some questions in, of, of, blo of blog posts that I've got there in LinkedIn about CRM, so the importance for CRM systems to evolve, which is really what Glenn ha has done for Sugar CRM with integrating this module. We want to make sure that a CRM system isn't a graveyard of information, but it actually en enables process improvement. Um, you know, the future of CRM really is a mashup. It's a case of taking best technologies, whether it's a marketing automation tool or a sales methodology, um, social, and integrating it with CRM to be able to deliver customer experience. Um, it's important to understand why CRM implementations fail, which is what that particular post is about. Um, and you know the important thing in this post is that you really can't function without a CRM if, if, if you're serious about the way that you go to market. Um, this post you're looking at there, you can't manage revenue in CRM, really talks about Jason Jordan's concept that you can only really manage, manage activities that you're seeking to drive to deliver objectives that then eventually deliver revenue in CRM. Um, you know, and, and CRM shouldn't hijack customer experience, it should really be be, be the basis of it. So, Glenn, I'll just th throw back to you and uh, and we'll have some Q&A. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so, so, look, th thank you very much for that, Tony. Um, uh, look, look, uh, you know, as, as uh, you know, we're, we're not really someone that uh, you need to, you need to sell to. Of course, uh, uh, we've been using your methodology for a number of years now and it's really, really empowered our team to, uh, to be more effective in, in how they sell in those, in those complex deals. Um, now, now um, we do actually have uh, a couple of questions coming through um, from some of the attendees. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass this one to you, Tony. So, the question is, uh, from Tom, okay, and his question, isn't enterprise selling too grey to put into a methodology? What are your thoughts there? So I, I, I don't think enterprise selling is, is too grey. Um, in any enterprise deal, we need to make sure we're covering the right relationships, we're creating value, we've got a strategy, and we know their process. Um, and, and all of the classic uh, complex selling methodologies make sure that they address those things. So um, if you're seeking to manage complexity with people, then, then you need a methodology. It's really a way of thinking about an opportunity. Um, every organization's process you know, will be different. So the process they use, the particular qualification questions they use, for example. So all of those things actually need to be tailored. But, but my view is you can't succeed in enterprise selling unless you have a well-proven methodology and you need some discipline with how you use it. Absolutely, and and just to, to add to that as well, um, uh, look, I, I can see the the point that Tom's making that e even uh, despite um, 
you know, the fact that every enterprise deal is different, uh, what, what you will find is that every enterprise deal has those four elements, the, uh, the relationship, strategy, the process, um, uh, and, the, and the unique value. Thank you. So even though those specific details differ on a, on a deal by deal basis. Um, we've got a question from uh, Amit, um, and, and um, I'll, I'll give this one to you, Tony, but um, you may not be familiar with the other methodology, so if you want me to answer this, I can. Um, how does Tony's methodology differ from Phil Winters, and is Tony's methodology embedded uh, into Sugar CRM out of the box? Um, so, so are you familiar with uh, Phil Winters, Tony? Yes, I'm really embarrassed to say that I'm not. I thought I knew all of the sales methodologies that were out there in the world, um, yeah. but I, I, I haven't heard of Phil Winters. No worries. So, so I can take this one, and, and I think the key here is, is um, I'd say that you, you probably do, um, and, and the key thing with Phil Winters is Phil Winters um, does not have a sales methodology. He, his methodology is about driving customer experience across the organisation, okay? But his methodology does not empower, um, it, it's not a methodology that helps you win big um, B2B B deals. Um, his, his methodology is about looking at the customer experience from their point of view and making sure that you've tailored your solution around optimising that experience. Whereas what uh, Tony's methodology is, it's more about helping your sales team become more effective and, and yes customer experience is, is absolutely part of that but it's um, it's only one component in the in the whole in the whole uh, area. So Tony's Tony's methodology is more of a sales methodology, Phil Winters is more of a customer experience methodology. Okay. Yeah, and the one the, the one area I'd suggest that I'd have a lot of overlap with Phil is is this area of, of value. So the thing I'm very strong about is it's not about us projecting a value proposition at a client, it's about us understanding how they define value, what they're trying to achieve um, yes. and, and align, li aligning with them and what they need. Absolutely and, and sorry there was one other part to uh, a next question. Uh, is Tony's methodology embedded into Sugar CRM out of the box? Um, uh, no, it's, it's not uh, in the product out of the box. It's actually an installable module, um, very easy to install. It takes uh, minutes to get it up and running. Uh, and, and it's an additional product that, that CRM Online has developed that, that we charge for. Uh, but we have um, had the goal of, of making it um, uh, very transparent in its pricing um, and, and quite affordable. So, so we're not one of these these sales methodology organisations where if you ask us how much something costs, we're going to dodge and weave and and you know try and work out what your budget is. Uh, our goal has been to, to have very transparent pricing. So if you're curious about the pricing, um, we charge only for the users that require access to this. So typically sales reps, account managers, and sales managers, and it's 30 US dollars per, per user per month. Um, which, which is typically around a third of the other ma major methodologies uh, that are out there on the market. Um, if you'd like to, I'll just highlight as well, there's actually the RSVP selling brochure for Sugar CRM is in the webinar, in the handout section of your little go-to webinar panel. So if you'd like to have a bit of more of an in-depth look, um, you, can actually, uh, you can actually see that there. Okay. Um, so I think um, I think that may be the last of the questions. Uh, so look, I, I wanted to thank you, Tony, for, for coming on and, uh, and and giving your insight on this uh, on, on this webinar. Um, we will put a recorded version of this up on uh, uh, the RSVP Selling website, the CRM Online website, and LinkedIn. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for uh, for coming and uh, and attending the webinar. Thanks, Glenn, and thanks everyone.